Hello and welcome to Learn Synthesis with Pure Data, Season 1, Episode 3. Today we're going to look at wave shaping and creating the four basic wave shapes in synthesis. I think you'll find that my voice sounds a little better this time. I tweaked my settings here in my uh, recording software. And, um, you know, I'm not going to redo the first two episodes. Everything's quite intelligible. But, um, yeah, as an audio person, <laughs> I do want to get a better quality than I was getting. Um, but also, thank you for bearing with me with my limited uh, bandwidth. And um, I think right now I'm getting a pretty good video quality and audio quality. But it was a little rough there until I got that upgrade. So anyway, that's enough of that. Um, the four basic wave shapes are sine wave, uh, triangle wave, pulse wave, which um, includes the square wave, and sawtooth. So we're going to see how to make those in pure data today. Um, they're often used, still are, as um, basic signal um, starting mechanisms, like basically like the core of some signals for your sound, as well as as shapes to shape sound using um, them as modulators. So today we'll actually be making these oscillators that make these wave shapes and we're gonna make it into a multi-oscillator device that we will be able to use in the synthesizer we're gonna be making it for the rest of this first series of Learn Synthesis with Pure Data. Basically, we'll be ending up with our own simple synthesizer that includes all the main components, the fundamentals of synthesis that you should know until in the next series, series two, we'll launch into deeper material. So anyway, Let's get started on this. I should probably switch screens after I get to my desktop. <laughs> Always going to be a little bit of glitches. A little bit of glitching. Okay, now, here we are. Got the PD window up. We're also going to learn a little bit more PD stuff today. Um, not just in making these wave shapes, but uh, in the, the process of building this synthesizer, we're going to learn about sub patches and how to um, use them to make a, a better graphic user interface. So we're going to start off with um, a window about this big. It's not important to be precise right now, but I'm going to go here to save as and give it a named location on disk so here's my folder set, set up series one this is going to be episode three so i'm making the folder for it now incidentally i do not upload my patches because this series is about learning stuff and you learn best by making this stuff right along with me and also this is so that educators can also use this video series as a way to supplement their teaching. And therefore, I don't want to put things on my website where students can submit things without actually having built them themselves. So you can trust in this series if somebody submits something from the series, they actually made it themselves by following my instructions. Okay, so anyway, I'm just going to call this synth, and I could even use the capital letter S there, because this is going to be what we call a parent patch. This is going to be the main patch that someone opens, eventually uses synthesizer. Now, we're going to be building it in stages. So today, you know, this is going to be a combination lesson for learning, as well as building um, an element, uh, a component, or a module, better word, that will be in our synthesizer. 
And so, since this is going to be a module within an overall synthesizer, I'm going to build this synthesizer by using what's called uh, sub-patches. And so what I'm going to do here is hit Control-1, Command-1 in Mac, the shortcut for making a, an object. Uh, did it make it? There we go. Now we got it. And I'm going to type PD space and I'm going to call this now I'm going to use this name right now um, but we're going to find out later in the series why I'm using this name because the oscillator we're going to make today which we will listen to also eventually is really going to be for modulation okay and next week we're going to make uh, the oscillator well two of them for generating sound signal because next week we're going to learn um, how to make the same four basic wave shapes but using another method and I'll just leave it at that so I'm going to call this um, let's see amp underscore mod Remember, we want our things in PD to be like one word. So I'm using an underscore so that I can say amp and mod, but still have it be like one word as far as PD is concerned. No spaces in it, basically. Okay. And now you saw this window come up here. This window is the inside of that. When you type PD, put a space and then give it some sort of name you are creating what's called a sub patch. So this window here, the main window, synth, which we saved to disk, now contains a patch within it. So it is a patch that contains a patch. And the patch on the outside, this main window here, is what is called a parent patch. And so this is going to be a sub patch, a child of the parent, basically. So it's a patch within a patch. Now, I am going to make this bigger. And in fact, the, yeah, that's fine. No, actually, I'm going to move it over here. I like to work with things over here and still see the PD window. And uh, so it's covering up the parent patch, but every now and then we're going to look at the parent to see some things as we go. So right now, all you need to know is this window is displaying what this sub patch is containing. And actually, the first thing we're going to do is make this sub patch have a viewable area. And the way we're going to do that is by right clicking on the background blank background. Now the background of a patch is called its canvas. There are, a, and you can make other canvases that are like backgrounds that are, that we will do to make some colorful backgrounds for our synthesizer. Um, but the main background of the patch is called its canvas. Um, so just wanted to let you know that's what it's called. And if we right click on it, just any blank space here, and go to properties, this is now the canvas properties for the sub patch. So this is its properties as a sub patch, its background. But what we are going to do is make this graph on parent. And you see there's a checkbox here for that. I'm going to zoom in because the print's getting small. When I zoom in, you'll see sometimes, like um, from the screen recorder, a second mouse cursor. When you see that, sorry, there's no way to get rid of that. <laughs> um, so you're going to just want to go with the big cursor, the one that right here. Okay, so we're going to click Graph on Parent. All right. Now there's another option here, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Basically, do we want to hide the text that will appear later? But when we see it, I'll point that out, and we can come back here and hide it. Okay, 
Now, you don't need to mess with any of this stuff here, but there is a size, two size boxes here, and the one that is in line with the X axis is the one that's horizontal size, and the one in line with the Y axis is the vertical size. And I'll show you what I mean. You see how they say right now, well, let me zoom in because actually this is a little small for me. Um, 85 by 60. Okay, now let me show you what that means. What you see here, this red outline is what is called like a viewable area. This is the area that is going to be shown on the parrot patch and things you put in here will be displayed on the parent patch. Let me just move this down a little bit and you'll see right now we have a gray square or a rectangle. We have a gray rectangle. It's the same size as this. And this is just showing us that this is the sub patch and it's graphing on parent. But since it's windows open, what it shows is gray. When I close the window, I'm hitting Control W, Command W, and Mac. You'll see now it shows a, an outline. So now our object is really something that can show visual information that we put in this box in the sub patch and it'll show up on the parent patch. And you'll actually be able to, with some of the objects that we'll make, click on them and use them. Now you see this here, it's saying PD space amp mod, because that's what I named this sub patch. That's what you can hide with that other option that I talked about earlier in the canvas properties. Do we want this to display or not? I don't want to because I can make a better display of this uh, sub patch's name. So I'm going to right click on it again and go to open. We now have the sub patches window open again. And you see this becomes a gray box again. Whenever you see a gray box for your sub patch that's graphing on parent, it means that window is open. So it won't display anything right now. It will when we close this window. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that. But the size that it is right now is not good for what we're going to need it for. Um, but I'm going to make the size after I make a few things that we're going to put inside here to graph on the parent patch that will be controls for our synthesizer. Now from the put menu, you know that we can make arrays. Also the shortcut command shift, well, control shift A in Windows, command shift A in Mac. I think it's control shift A in Linux as well. Um, so what is its name going to be? Remember, that's the first thing you do have to give your array a name or else it'll have the name that's put in there by default, array one. Um, I'm going to put in here. Now this needs to be unique. And since in the overall synthesizer, I am going to have other arrays displaying things. I'm going to call this. amp underscore mod underscore wave. We already have the sub patch named amp underscore mod, but this, since it's going to be displaying a waveform, I'm just calling it amp mod wave, which makes sense. Um, and at this point, I'm just going to let it be like that. There are some things I'll change later. But I'll do that when the time comes. So now we have this array. Oh, somehow I got into run mode. I'm hitting Control E to get out of run mode. Hit the hand so I can move it around. Otherwise, you can take arrays and draw in them. <laughs> but it's since they are storing values along the horizontal axis, you can only make you know some simple shapes. And really, that's all you want to make <laughs> with an array. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'd like this to eventually fit in there. So I need to make that bigger. And there's another thing I'm going to fit in there. We're going to go to the put menu and we're going to make 
a horizontal radio box. H radio right here. It has a shortcut. Shift control H. What? No. H I. Let me zoom in on that. Yeah, it is. Okay, well that I think I'll just go to the put menu to make it. <laughs> okay, so now what this is, I'm gonna go into run mode to show you. Control E Command E of Mac. This allows you to select different boxes in a horizontal strip of boxes. Kind of like radio buttons in HTML. A lot of times those are circular, but basically you can only select one box at a time. But it gives you a visual way of selecting a box that you can use as a selector for multiple items to select. Now I'm going to right click on it and go to its properties. Now in the properties, there are some things I want to do. I want to use this as a selector to select the four basic wave shapes, like one of the four. So you can select different wave shapes that you want your oscillator to be using. And so since there's going to be four, right up here at the top, size 15, that means the individual pixel size of each box. Just like our um, graph on parent red box here, it's pixels width and height. So what you can do is just experiment until you get the size that you want. 15. <laughs> I don't know, we could always change it later. So I'll just stick with 15. And I may change it as we build this thing in what looks nice. That's really just visual. Now here, number of values. This means how many different boxes there are for you to select. We want four, because we want this to select four different shapes. Now, here's send and receive symbols. We haven't been using them so far. But I think we're going to. What a send symbol is, is basically you put in a series of letters, numbers, or underscores. I wouldn't put any other punctuation in. And remember, no spaces. That's kind of like a name, but it's an important thing because it's a name that ED will remember and keep in its memory as when you click this, and select something, this send symbol is the symbol it uses as that signal. Kind of like if you were to connect a patch cable from this to something else, whatever comes out of here goes to that something else. In this case, instead of using patch cables, we're going to use symbols to send from it. And this is what I like to do. I'm going to call it um, amp mod wave underscore send because this is basically going to be our wave selector and you see i used underscores all the way through there so there's no spaces and i'm not using capitals i remember i like to use all lowercase for any of these symbol names so i don't have to remember what i capitalized if i did and then we're going to call this one amp this is its receive symbol this is how we can send information to this radio box strip so amp underscore mod underscore wave underscore receive and i always like to make it the same number of digits as the send four digits and abbreviate receive as recv it's just a habit but Whatever your symbol names are, you got to remember them. So I make them something logical. If you ever forget them, you can right click on this, go to properties and see what the symbol names are. And then we'll have the options of colors and everything. Um, but we can also give it a label, which is a name for it, but it's not a name that PD remembers. Like this is just be a displayed name. So this is just something that somebody using the synthesizer will see as a display for this radio box telling them what it is. 
So this, if you leave spaces in it, it'll automatically put in underscore. But here I don't need to follow the rules as far as um, not using uppercases. So I will use uppercases because I think the uppercases look good. And I'm going to use all uppercases. I'm going to say just shape. Or how about this? Yeah, shape. Now I'm going to press OK. And you see now we have the name shape above it. Just a display name. And it has four boxes that we can select from. Now what a radio box does is depending on what box you select, it's going to send out a number in a range starting at zero. So the leftmost one is actually zero, one, two, three. Four different values, zero, one, two, three. Um, but it starts at zero, so you gotta remember that. So now what we're gonna do, I'm in edit mode again. I'm going to position this like this. And then I wanna put this stuff inside there. Obviously it's not big enough. So I'm going to do a little bit of guesstimating. These boxes are 15 pixels. Ugh. Since I've done this before, this is roughly 75. I know the height of this, which we can change. Let's click on the properties of the uh, array. Now we're going to look at this second properties window. This one doesn't open up when you first make the array, but anytime you right click on it and go to properties afterwards, it'll open up. And down here at the right where it says height and width, this is where you can select the height and width of visually of the um, array. And it is 200 by 140. I don't know. I'm just going to say 150 by 150. Make it square. See, it made it square. Okay. Now, I'm thinking something that's about 200 tall. Should fit all this in. This is 150. I think this is about 50 here. So I'm just going to click anywhere on the background. This little stuff here, anytime you make a radio box, it likes to leave trails of where it was. It's kind of like the inlet and the outlet for it, but it's just a little glitch. Don't worry about it. It'll disappear soon enough. I'm going to right click here on the blank background and go to properties. Now this is the properties of the canvas for our display area. Um, and I'm going to try width. Well, I made it 150 wide, but it'd be nice to have a little space like margins at the side. So I'm going to make it 170. And then it's height 200. Now these may be changed later as we add more things to this. But for this week's lesson, I think that should be good enough. Nope, not tall enough. And this is normal where you have to kind of resize things until you get them to the height you want. Let's also get this more in the middle so the margin on either side is about the same. There we go. I'd like to have a little margin on the top. So I'm guessing maybe about 40 more. So I gotta make sure I'm clicking on the blank space here. Properties. Let's make it 240 tall. That's a little bit more than we need, but you know. 240 is a nice round number. So what I'm going to do is select this stuff. Kind of move it more centralized. And 
I'm going to keep the margins at the bottom and the two sides about the same. Let a little extra space on the top. Now what I'm going to do is hit Control S, Command S, and Mac, just as a shortcut to save. And then I'm going to close this window, Control W or Command W and Mac. And we see on the parent patch, our array and the radio boxes are displaying within this area. And we still have that PD amp mod at the top. Since it's not in the way, I'm going to leave it like that. Maybe I can move this down a little bit. Right click on it, open it up. I close the window again just to kind of see. Yeah. That's looking pretty good. Right click on it, open. Okay, now we're editing our sub patch again. All right, so there you see how to display things in a sub patch on the parent patch. Now, the reason why it's like this is there'll be some things you want to display and other things you don't. We're going to make all our patching now to generate waveforms in this box and we don't want all that to display. So this is a way you can hide like all your uh, patching to make things function and just display the things that a person using the synthesizer would need to see. All right, so what I'm going to do is first of all, let's make some patching that allows us to make a, uh, we call it a sine wave, real simple. We've already done it, in fact. So I'm going to make first an oscillator object, OSC tilde. And I'm going to make the frequency. Since we're going to be hearing it just to hear these sounds, although eventually it won't be for that purpose. I'm going to put in a, um, a creation argument. When you put a space after the OSC tilde, the first thing you put in would be regarded as the frequency the oscillator is going to start off oscillating at. Space. And then I'm going to put a zero just to say at phase zero. No, I don't need to do that. Although, no, that's probably a good idea. For later. Okay. So we have that. Frequency, and then the second creation argument for OSC tilde is its phase. And phase in PD is expressed in a range of 0 to 1. So 0 means 0 degrees. 1 would be 360 degrees in the cycle, which is full circle coming back to the same place. But, for example, if you wanted it to be 90 degrees, you would want a quarter of the way through the cycle. So that would be 0 0.25. You want 180 degrees, since that's halfway through the cycle, it'll be 0 0.5. And then 270 degrees would be 0 0.75. But anyway, we're not going to be messing with that. Okay, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to write to this table to see the shape. We're going to use our all friend, ab write tilde space and then the table name and that means the array name amp mod wave with underscores in between underscore mod underscore wave okay good and then we can connect this up like this now um, as you know, we need to turn on ESP to see it, but there's some other things we need first. Remember, this takes snapshots, and so if we want to see animated snapshots of it, we need to use something that continually bangs, and that would be Metro. So I'm going to make a Metro object, Metro. 100, 
That means every 100 milliseconds it sends out a bang. We're going to connect it patch cable wise to tab right. And now, remember before we turned Metro on and off using a bang and a stop message. This is something that we're going to want to have on pretty much all the time, you know. But I guess it would be nice to have an option to turn it off. So what we're going to make instead is you can turn on and off Metro by sending it ones or zeros. And the perfect way to do that is to make a toggle. You can go in the put menu and select toggle, or you can make an object, Control one, command one and Mac, and just type the word toggle, T-O-G-G-L-E. And this toggle box, when we're in run mode, we can basically turn it on or off. We're gonna connect it up to Metro. And you know what else will be good? Put it up here so the user can turn it on or off. Now let's right click the toggle and give it a label. We're not going to give it a send or receive signal because we're not going to have something else that will tell it to turn on or off. It will be the person clicking it. That would be nice for it to have a label so they know what it does. On underscore off. Now let's see where it displays that label. So I'm going to go down here and hit apply. Not OK, but apply. Just to see where the label appears. All right, it's just to the right of the toggle. That's fine. And what is the toggle size? 15. The same size as the radio boxes. So That'll look pretty good. Let's just put it right here. Although I'm thinking the position of this label shape is above the radio boxes. It might be nice to put the label on off above the toggle. How do we do that? Well, we right click on it, go to properties. And you see where we typed in label on off right below it. These are X and Y coordinates for where the label will be positioned. Now, they work X means how far to the right or to the left. Positive numbers to the right, negative numbers to the left. It's at 17. Since the box itself is 15 pixels, it starts the label two pixels away from the side of the box. We're going to put it on top. So we're going to have it line up with the box. So I'm going to give it the X value of zero. Now let me hit apply and you'll see where it is. It's right inside the box because it's basically orienting it to the upper left hand corner of the box. That's how the graphic objects in pure data work. Um, everything orients to their upper left corner. So what we need to do is push this up to where the word shape is. Now what we can do to do that, that's what we're going to use the Y axis for. But what we're going to do to get it exact is just press OK here, close out of this menu, and see where the label position is for the radio box. Properties. You see its label position is zero, and then negative that six or eight. Eight. Negative values mean up and positive values mean down from the upper left hand corner. Kind of reverse to intuition, but so what we can do is right click on the toggle box again, go to properties, and let's make it negative eight. Okay. Don't worry, we're going to get to the wave shapes now. But we might as well make things look nice so you can see construction in pure data and, uh, you know, we can begin making this synthesizer because it's more fun to build stuff than just 
make learning examples. Okay, now I'm going to go into run mode and I'm going to go up to media and turn on DSP. We'll probably put a load bang and a message to turn on DSP automatically in a minute. That turn on. That means Metro's banging away at tab right and taking snapshots of the waveform. And so we see a 440 cycles per second sine wave. Okay. Now, this is what we need to do. We need to be able to tell, because we're going to make another wave shape now. And we need to tell this thing when to do what wave shape. Sorry about this. I'm just trying to get that. Just for anality sake. And the way we can do that, I can see I'm clicking it. I'm in edit mode, click on the patch cable, hit delete or backspace, and it gets rid of it. So now you don't see the image because this is no longer connected to tab right. I'm going to put in roll one, command one, a Mac, star, or an asterisk, tilde. This is a multiplication symbol, and with the tilde, it makes it a, uh, what do you call it, uh, an audio object. And so the numbers that are coming out of this oscillator object that make a wave shape get multiplied by something here. So what we're eventually going to do is send it a 1 for being on or a 0 for being off. Right now, since there's nothing in the multiplier, it assumes 0, and so it's off. But we'll see in a moment how we're going to, well, Toward the end, we're going to put in the controls for turning things on and off. Okay, I'm just thinking a little bit here. Yeah, I'm making a, I'm going to make a little bit more space. We eventually will put more stuff in there. And then I'm going to select this stuff and give it even more space because we're going to use this same tab right to display the sine wave or whatever wave actually okay so now let's do this we're going to make the next wave shape now this is not going to be I'm going to change the order of these later, but uh, I want to start with this next wave shape because it's a simpler one to make and it kind of shows how the math works. Because we're just going to use math to change the shapes of the waveform. Now we're going to use a new object here Control 1, Command 1, and Mac. Phasor, P H A S O R, build A. Base. I'm going to say 440 and a 0 once again for frequency 440 phase 0. Now since DSP is on this is already generating but it's not going anywhere so we're not going to see anything. But I'll connect it up and you can you'll be able to see what phase or makes. Phase or shouldn't be confused with a phaser. E H A S E R, um, because that's a different thing in audio. But phasor goes from zero up to one. So in the array, you see it's starting at zero and going up to one in a straight line. So you're basically seeing a flow of diagonal lines. Now, this is how we can start to make a sawtooth wave. But a sawtooth wave, first of all, goes the other way. It goes from one down to zero, technically. 
This would sound very similar to a sawtooth wave. In fact, probably the same. But let's just be accurate and make it go the other way. So this is how we do it. I'm disconnecting the cable. What we're going to do is take what's coming out of here. And we're going to subtract one from it. So you'll see, see I'm selecting this object in edit mode. And then I'm going to hit control one. And it makes an object right below it and even patches it up. So we're going to do minus tilde space one. Or wait a minute. No. <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking something else. We're going to do times tilde negative one. So we're multiplying all the stream of numbers produced by phasor by negative one. So what we get as a result now is it still starts at zero because zero times negative one is still zero. But now every number that's being multiplied by negative one is is negative values now so they're the same numbers but now they're on the negative end of the uh, table so they're going from zero down to negative one because one times negative one is negative one so now we have this facing the right way but the thing is a sawtooth wave will go from one down to negative one so we got to double its height to make it fill up the whole table then we need to do something else as well but I'll show you that in a minute let's select this object hit control one or command one in Mac and now we're going to do this R tilde we're multiplying again two that's going to double its height now let's see what the result is you see it's going out of the table now because now it's going from zero down to negative two but this is the right height for us. We just need to bump it up so it's in the table. And the way we can do that is by adding 1 to it. Just plus 1. So we select this. And roll 1, Command 1 to Mac, plus tilde, space 1. And then we're going to connect it up. Sorry. Get right over that outlet. Connect it up. There we go. We're now getting a sawtooth wave shape. But to visually make it look more pleasing, we're going to right click on the array, go to properties. And then in this properties window down in this middle area, remember earlier we, I said we were going to change something. I'm going to make its display type instead of just being points. I'm going to make it a Bezier curve, which connects the points and visually makes it look nicer. I'll press OK here. And there we see it actually connecting up a vertical line between negative one and positive one. So it looks more like that nice sawtooth wave shape. It doesn't affect what this is being generated here. It's just affecting the display of it, but that looks nicer. Now we need to add one more thing. We need to be able to turn this on or off. We have our sawtooth wave shape, but just like the sign, it'd be nice to turn it on or off. So I'm going to make a star tilde. I'm not putting a number in as a creation argument. And just like the sine wave, since it's multiplying by zero technically, we're not going to see anything display, but that's okay for now, because it's just for now. We know we got our sawtooth wave shape. Later, we're going to make sure it turns on and off when we want it. Now I'm going to select this and move this a little bit further to the right. Because this is actually going to be our fourth wave shape. I'm doing these in order of harmonic strength, and this is something we're going to learn next week. Uh, because next week we're going to generate, um, we're going to use 
additive synthesis approach is again, except this time we're going to do it a much quicker and simpler way. Uh, basically, we're going to use sine tones to generate the four basic wave shapes. Um, but that's when we'll learn about the harmonic content of these wave shapes. Basically, the sawtooth is brighter and full of strong harmonic levels, whereas the sine wave has none. It's just, well, it has one harmonic, the fundamental pitch, H1. If you remember last week's lesson, you'll know what I mean by that. So, that's the simplest in harmonic structure. This is the most complex of the ones that we're making, or the one that has the most harmonic content. Stronger harmonics. And we'll see that firsthand next week. Okay, so what are we going to do now? Well, we have two more wave shapes to make. Next one we're going to make is a triangle wave. It basically goes up from negative 1 to positive 1, and then down back to negative 1. So how do we make that shape? Well, we're going to need two phasers to do that. This one's actually going to use two of them. Phaser, tilde, 440, phase, 0. And I'm going to copy it. Just select it, Control D or Command D in Mac, make a second one. Now, what we need to do is we're going to use this to make one part of the wave and the, this to make another part. Remember what Phaser does. It makes a 0 to 1 line. But because we have the Bezier curve display, we see the vertical line going back down to zero. Okay, so that's what we're getting out of that. Now, what I'm going to do is make it go up only halfway. So I select it, go one, command one, and Mac. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to use a new object called clip. L-I-P tilde. It clips off ranges of the wave shape that are not between the values that you give it. Now, since this is going from 0 to 1, I'm going to make it go from 0, space, 0 0.5. Now, let's see what the result of that is. Connect it up here. It's going up to 0, and then... It goes halfway up to 0 0.5, and it pushes it down. It keeps it from going up to 1. So we have a slope up to 0 0.5, and then it's a flat line until it goes back down to 0 again. Okay, so we kind of clipped off the top. Now, what we're going to do is take this one, And we're going to reverse what it does. We want it to not slope up, but we want it to slope down. And how do we do that? Well, let me disconnect this first of all, so we can see this one on its own. So, you know, since we didn't do any math yet, this is going from 0 to 1. Okay? Now, we want it to go the other way. So what we're going to do is multiply it by negative 1 again. Okay, so we got it going the right direction. But we want it up here, basically. Just trust me. I'm going to click this, disconnect it. Make another object box and make it a plus tilde one. So now, see what we got. This is the right side or the downward slope of our eventual triangle. Okay. Now, what we need to do is clip this one the same way. We're going to take this clip object here, control D to duplicate, 
Command D and back. Connect this up there. Now let's see what that does. So now what we have is the opposite of this one here. We have it going flat at 0 0.5 and sloping down to zero. So it cuts off the the range of values between 0 0.5 and 1 and makes it a flat top. Now what we're going to need to do is add these together. And we won't be completely done yet. There's something else we need to do after that. Plus tilde. But at least this will allow us to combine these two together. And basically what we want to do is have the one sloping up to 0 0.5 and the other one sloping down from 0 0.5. And the clips keep them within that range. And that's pretty close. That's actually pretty good. Now, a lot of times what happens, though, and, and if you're following along, you may get this. You may get a weird shape here. To make sure these guys line up with each other, they need to be sent the same phase value at the same time. So I'll show you. If you're getting something that's not quite like this, this is what you need to do. You need to make a message box, put a zero in it. Even if you're getting this and it's looking like a triangle shape, you want to do this anyway. Because I'm just lucky that I'm getting a triangle shape, to be honest with you. And you see I'm connecting it to the right inlet of phaser. That's where the phase is received. But we want to send it the same phase at the same time. I'm going to go into run mode and click this. And that gave us a little more exact triangle. And that should have fixed some weird shapes if you got weird shapes after you did the rest of this patching. Now, we have more to do just yet. Now that they're added together and making a triangle shape, We want to make this triangle shape go all the way from negative one up to one. The first thing we're going to do is make it bigger. This is taking up a range between, looks like 0 0.5 up to one. So it's, it needs to be multiplied by four to make it the right size. So I'm clicking on that object, hitting Control-1, Command-1 and Mac, star tilde, base 4. Now let's see what that does. All right, we're getting a full-size triangle wave, but it's well outside the table. So we need to subtract it back down here. Now how far off is it? I don't have this memorized, so I'm going to try something here. Command 1, Control 1, and we're going to subtract tilde, base, I'm going to say 4. Let's see if that gets it in the table. Well, now we're just outside the table. Let's change this. We can just click right in here and edit the number, and instead of subtracting four, let's subtract three. There we go. Now we're in the table. There we go. Now, just like the others, we're going to put the star tilde in, which we'll turn it off for now. But we need it for our on off switch later. Being anal. Okay, let's make the star tilde.
we go. Connect it up. What I'm going to do is try to get all my star tildes in line with. Now this wave shape, the triangle wave, is the one that has the most math in it. So actually, yeah, give things plenty of room. We're going to put our third wave shape right here. This will be the pulse wave. Now, connect this up. And then I'm going to put all these star tildes in line with each other. So just visually, it makes it uh, more consistent because we're going to add something to the star tilde to make some more sense out of this or to actually receive our on off signal. In fact, I'm going to select all of this and give it enough, enough room because I know what we're going to be putting there. Well, not right away. We still need to make the pulse wave. Or the square wave. I think what we're going to do for today is just make a square wave. And then, late, well, no. We'll make it pulsable. <laughs> Okay, so once again, we're going to need a phasor. I'm going to put in its defaults again, 440 and 0. So you know by now, this, this basically goes from 0 to 1. Now what a pulse wave does is it goes from negative 1 up to 1. But in a vertical line, and then depending on its um, its width, pulse waves can vary in width, and we'll see that in a bit. After its width is executed, like it'll stay up at 1, it'll go straight down to negative 1. So it basically oscillates between negative 1 and 1. So this sloping thing needs to be changed. And there's an object for that, especially. We're going to make Control-1, Command-1 to Mac. Uh, eventually move this down. But we're going to use a new object called Exper. E-X-P-R tilde. Base. And what we're going to do is use some weird symbology right now. But I'll explain it. Dollar sign. D1 base dollar sign D2. Now, if we hook this up, we won't see anything just yet. Hold on. I think I have a typo. EXPR tilde dollar sign D1 dollar sign D2. It didn't make the object. Is there an E in here? I've done this so many times before. Let me write. Here, let me just make the object without any values behind it. Let's see if I can see a help file. There we go. Help. Always good. That reference. Let's see here. Now, this object is kind of complex. It does a bunch of different things. And what I'm trying to get it to do is to make a pulse wave. There must be something wrong with my creation argument. Here, I'm going to open this sub patch, see what we got. There should be an example of the pulse wave in here. 
Here we go. Dollar sign F1. Oh, I know what I left out. My memory just kicked in. We need to put in here. I'm going to delete this one that I used to get the help file. You need to put in here a greater than symbol. A less than symbol. Hold on, I'm not getting it. Less than symbol. Now, what is dollar sign V1? Well, anything with a dollar sign before it in PD is what's called a variable. Meaning this gets replaced, E1 gets replaced by whatever's coming in through the left inlet. Dollar sign V2 gets replaced by whatever comes in through the right inlet. And it's an audio rate object, so it receives audio rate signals. And what we're going to do now, just to be simple about it, is make a message 0 0.5. And hook that up to here. We're eventually going to change this a little bit. And we're going to connect this up to the tab, right, to see what it looks like. And then we need to hit the message 0 0.5 in run mode to see it display. Okay. What we just got now is expression basically is taking that ramp and just making it go from 0 to 1 in the vertical line. And the width of what we call the pulse, that means the upper part of the wave shape, is going to be designed in proportion based on the number that's received here. So let's see what happens when I change this message to 0 0.25 and click it. You see how the pulse is now like about 25% of the overall cycle and the flat line at zero is 75% of the overall cycle. So this is basically saying what our pulse width is going to be. Okay, what we're gonna do is change it back to 0 0.5 to just make it a simple square wave for now. And we gotta send the message by clicking on it. There we go. There. So now we have a square wave, except it really goes from negative one up to one. So what do we have to do? Yes, or math. So first of all, let's make it the height it needs to be. We need to double its height. I'm going to hit command one, control one, windows times tilde, oops, our tilde. Now, Obviously, what that's going to do is take it to go from 0 up to 2 instead of 0 to 1. But it's the right height. But we've got to drop it down. We need to subtract 1 from it. So we make another object, minus tilde space 1. And now we'll see square wave going from zero, I mean from negative one up to one. Good. Let me just move this out of the way here. There we go. Now we're going to do what we did with everything else. We're going to turn it off with a star tilde that has no value behind it. And then we're going to make our selector work so that we can select either of these waveforms. Now, I know we haven't heard any of these yet. We'll do that right after we do this. We'll hear them, although eventually this oscillator is not going to be used to play these waveforms, but to use them as shapes for modulation. 
And I will explain later. I mean, this is a series. All right, this is a series. The story continues. Okay, so. Now, if we send zeros to these star tildes, it basically cancels everything out and the, zero be and the signal becomes zero. In other words, it becomes off. By having all these patch cables going into here, it's almost like adding them together, but, um, you know, without actually putting the adder in. But all these signals are going in here, and we don't want them all at once. We want to select one at a time. So we need to use ones and zeros to turn on and off each of these oscillators. Now, the way we can do that is by using messages and using what are called receives. I'm going to make one here for the sign just to start with. In PD, if you make an object and put an R in it, sorry, put it down, R, and then a space, you've made a receive. Now, what a receive does is it'll receive signals that are sent to a certain symbol name. You know how we named this array amp mod wave? Well, let's make a receive so we can send a one or a zero to turn on or off the sign. So R space, we're gonna say sign underscore on off all one word you can put an underscore between them if you want but i'm just going to say sign on off like that and i have an underscore between sign and on off remember no spaces all lowercase don't put weird punctuation in under the other than underscores and you'll be good now i'm going to connect this up just to show you how it works. But I'm going to add more patching to make it smoother. Well, actually, maybe I'll do it later because I want you to be able to hear this the way it is and then see why we're going to put extra patching. In. Okay. So this is where we're selecting waveforms from. And what we're going to need to do is send things from it. When you click the first box, I want it to be a sine wave that plays. I want it to be these wave shapes in order left to right. Now, when you click this box, it's going to send out a zero. So what we're going to do is make a new object that we haven't learned yet. Control one, command one to Mac, S E L space zero, space one, space two, space three. Now, cell is a select object. We're just abbreviating it S E L. Some objects can use the full name for abbreviations, like receive. You could type the word receive and it'll make a receive object but it has an abbreviation of just an R. And I like to use that because it takes up less space. You could type the full word select, but SEL does the same thing without taking up more space. After SEL, the creation arguments that you make will make that number of outlets at the bottom of the object. Since we have four creation arguments, the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3, we have four outlets here plus a fifth. The fifth outlet, or I could say this, no matter how many creation arguments you make, there'll always be one extra, and it'll always be the one at the right. The one that's the rightmost outlet will always be the extra one. Now, since we made a 0, 1, 2, 3, what select does is it detects what comes into it. So we're actually 
Now, I did make a send symbol for this, so we don't need to do a patch cable. We could just do a patch cable, and I wouldn't need the send symbols. <laughs> but since I made them, might as well use them. Let's make an object that's another receive. Receive. R space. And then what is the send symbol from this? Because this is going to be, we want to receive what this is sending. And the send symbol was amp underscore mod underscore wave underscore send. Now we can double check that by right clicking on this radio box and go to properties. Amp mod wave send. Good. So this receives that signal. It would be the same as having a patch cable connected. But in case we want to send it from somewhere else, I don't know why we'd want to do that, but whatever. This will receive anything that's sent by using that send symbol. So anyway, if it gets a zero, a one, two, or three, it'll send a bang out those outlets. Now the outlets don't line up with the numbers that you put in here but they're in the same order. So zero is the leftmost outlet. One is the second outlet. Two is the third outlet. And three is the fourth outlet. Fifth, that extra one I talked about before, is none of the above. If something comes in to select the object that is not one of these creation arguments, it puts that number out here. Now, the thing is, we don't really need this outlet at all because this is only going to send 0, 1, 2, or 3. It won't receive another number. So, this outlet, we're not going to connect up or do anything with it. But if we, set, if we receive a 0, that means we want a sine wave. I'm going to make a message. And this message is going to tell the sine wave to go on. What's the receive for the sine waves amplifier, the star tilde? Sine underscore on off. So these types of messages you want to start with a semicolon. Semicolon. Hit enter, go to the next line, although it doesn't right away. Sorry, but it doesn't. But as soon as you start typing, it will. Sign underscore on off base one. And then another semicolon. That will tell. That will give this receive right here a one, which will basically turn it on. So I need to go into run mode. Let me just do it here. I'm going to click one here, which is not the sign. But when I click this box here, the zero gets sent to select through this receive here, and this message will be sent. I didn't click it. There we go. Oops. Do we have any errors over here? Well, that's from the expert object that I made incorrectly. Couldn't create. Okay, yeah, that's from that object. We don't have any new error messages. S-I-N-E underscore O-N-O-F-F -F. S-I-N-E underscore O-N-O-F-F -F base one. This should work. Let me just click this. Okay, it made it. So there's something wrong with our receive here. Select didn't get the signal. R. That's not an R, that's a T. 
That's the problem. Let's put R in there. Now, to test this out more fully, what we're going to do is the following. I'm going to move this down a bit. And make another message. Semicolon, enter, and then I'm going to type triangle underscore on off space one semicolon. Now, this is going to be to send a message to Triangle to turn on or off. We didn't make its receive yet, but we will. But if we're going to turn Triangle on, we need to turn Sign off. So let's do this. Let's add another line to this message. I'm putting it above the Triangle message just to keep them in the same order, top to bottom, left to right, because we're going to actually be sending messages for all of these. Base zero. We need to send sign a zero to turn it off. Otherwise, we'll see both the triangle and the sign trying to be created at the same time. It'll be a, an amalgamation of the two of them. Now, I need to make a receive here for triangle. Receive our space. Triangle underscore on off. Connect it up to the right inlet there. I'm remembering that I'm actually going to be adding more patching in here. Um, but we're going to do that after we hear these. So you can see why. Okay, there we go. So now let's click this message. Well, actually, let's try it from over here. Let's click box, the second box. It should send a one and send the message we made. There we go. We got the triangle. Now, if we want to go back to the sign, we need to turn the triangle off. We can't just turn on the sign. Well, let me show you what happens if we do. We get a combination of the two. All right, so let's go in here, edit this. I'm going to put it after this stuff. Triangle underscore on off base zero. Okay, let's go into run mode. Now we can switch between the sign and the triangle. There we go. Now we want to switch between all four. And to do that, we're going to need a little extra space to put in more messages. So let's put this over here. OK. I'm going to make all the messages now. I'm just making extra room because actually we're going to need receives for all these. And I'm going to keep the receives horizontally aligned with each other across here. It's just nice to make the patch organized. Here, um, I hit control one, but I didn't see anything happen. Uh, that means it made an empty object box somewhere. Well, I'll find it eventually. Can we? Put it here, control one. There we go. Receive R space. We'll say pulse underscore on off. Now, the reason why I'm saying pulse instead of square, right now it's going to make a square wave, but eventually we're going to make this something that you can alter. Not this week, because we're kind of getting long on the time. But eventually we're going to make something that allows you to change the um, pulse width so you don't just have the option of a square wave. 
we'll even be able to hear that this week because I'll just physically change that number. All right. And then we're going to make a receive for here. R space saw space. Oh, underscore, no spaces, on, off. Connect it up. Okay. Sorry, getting a little anal here. Let's move this a little. Okay. Now we have all the receives in. We can make full messages. Let's make a message for the sawtooth. Because that's going to be the one at the top, at least physically, location-wise. Semicolon. Enter. We're going to say sign underscore on off space one. Semicolon. Triangle underscore on off base zero. I know I made a mistake up there. You don't want the sign on, you want it off. Because this is going to turn on the uh, sawtooth. Sorry about that. Okay. Then I hit enter there. Now, anytime you hit enter when you're editing the message box, it doesn't go to the next line until you type. Pulse underscore on off space zero semicolon. Then finally saw underscore on off space one semicolon. Don't forget these semicolons at the end of each line. Part of the syntax, you got to have it. So all these are going to be turned off, but the saw will be turned on. Now we need to do the same type of thing for the pulse wave. And I'll show you here. Actually, I'm going to delete these. You're going to be like, what? No, watch this. We're just going to duplicate this. Select it. Control D or Command D to duplicate. Connect this up. Now all we got to do, zero, zero, change this one to one to turn on the pulse and change this one to zero to turn off the saw. Now let's just select both of these because we need two more messages. Connect this one up here. Connect this one up. Oops. Connect this one up to here. Select these. Move them over. That's good enough. Okay. Zero. This one turns on pulse. That one needs to be a one. And saw needs to be a zero. Everything needs to be typed correctly. Any typos will mess things up. One, zero, zero, and the last one, zero. So it's sending zeros to all the ones that will be turned off. Now let's test it. Triangle. Square or pulse. Sawtooth. Let's go back again. Yep, we're good. Now here's something else I need to add. When this thing loads up, there's two things that need to happen. 
I'm going to go here and make an object. Load bang. Remember that? Well, first of all, we'll have the DSP. We'll leave the DSP. We won't put in the message to turn it on automatically right now because we only need one of those for the whole synthesizer. And it doesn't. It would be unintuitive if that thing occurred in the amplitude modulation box. Um, so just trust me, later we'll add one. But we definitely need something for this object to work. When it opens, we want it to send this phase message to these two phasers. Make sure they're in phase with one another to get an accurate triangle wave shape. And then we also want to hit this message so that this pulse wave has a value at least. Eventually we'll make it so you can change this, but that'll be another week. But right now, if XPER does not get the 0 0.5 value, the pulse wave won't be anything. It'll just be a flat line. So in order for it to work, we need to do that. Now when the patch opens, the radio thing will be at 0. But the message won't be sent. So there won't be anything happening. We're also going to hit have the load bang hit this. So when the patch opens, what will happen is this zero will actually get be sent to here. And it'll just set up a sine wave to start with. So that way, the sine wave will be going to begin with. Now I'm going to hit control S to save. And I said we were going to hear these, so we might as well. Um, we'll eventually take this DAC out, but remember to get sound out, DAC tilde. And actually I'm going to do this just so no ears get blasted. I'm going to put a star tilde and remember last week yet. Yeah. Star tilde, and I'm going to put 0 0.3, just so they're nice and quiet. This won't be in the end result. This is just for now to hear these. Now I need to hook up all these to there. So just like um, it was hooked up to tab right, and we actually hear it. Yay. honest with you I'm gonna turn that to a 0 0.2 there we go and then let's hook this up to there as well we have all four hooked up so we can hear them. now it's only coming out the left side because I only have it hooked up to the left inlet now we hear it both sides okay Next, let's hear them. Triangle. Square. Sawtooth. Media. DSP off, because that's getting... Woof. Okay. So you can hear how, yeah, the sawtooth is the buzziest of them all. Um, sine wave is the smoothest. Pure, it is a pure tone, so that's why it... Sounds like that. Um, the second one, the uh, triangle, has a few more harmonics. Kind of smooth, but brighter. Square wave, which is a type of pulse wave, is pretty, you know, but it's starting to get buzzier. But we also, I'm also hearing some extra tones in there. That's called aliasing. And actually, that's why this wave shaping table, we're not going to use as our carrier signal, meaning we're not going to use this module eventually to generate sound. We're going to use it to shape things because it has nice, precise shapes. But these nice, precise shapes create some extra frequencies that are higher than what's called the Nyquist theorems. Um, um, it's, it's maximum. 
basically there's frequencies that are higher than half the sampling rate. If you take our free sampling rate, which is 44,100, cut it in half, 22,050, that should be the highest frequency, or well, even below that should be the highest frequency that we hear. Somewhere around 18,000 should be the, lot, the, the highest frequency we should be allowing through. Now we could put a low pass filter on and some other things to deal with that, but I'm experimenting here and I think next week, the oscillator we'll make next week um, will be our carrier because we're gonna make these shapes in a different way. Okay, so just leave it at that for now. But that's why the sawtooth and the squares are a little bit noisier. Not that they're brighter. Brighter is their inherent qualities. They have higher frequencies in them. They're fairly stronger. So you hear more brightness as you go to the right in order with these wave shapes. But I'm hearing some more noise from the square wave and from the sawtooth than I should. Um, and the way we would fix that normally is put a low pass filter on to cut out higher frequencies that would eventually go over half the sampling rate called the Nyquist theorem. And the Nyquist frequency is half that of your sampling rate. You shouldn't have any frequencies higher than that. But since a low pass filter tends to have a slope to it, you want to send your, set your maximum frequency or what they call a cutoff frequency a little bit lower so that by the time it slopes off, it's not letting anything above 22,050 through. But anyway, uh, all that stuff we can even get further into detail about later. But right now, since we're just using it for its shapes, we um, are not going to um, uh, worry about that. Now, the thing is, I don't know if you notice this, but when I was switching between these, and this is going to be the last thing we'll do, when I was switching between these, there was like a snapping sound in each time I'd switch. It like, it would just like, it'd be such a sudden, sudden shift from one wave shape to another that you hear what's called an artifact. It's like a snapping sound. And it's nice to get rid of those, especially since it's simple enough. What we need to do is when we're sending the ones and zeros, oh, those are those object boxes I made that I didn't know where they appeared. They were right here. Get rid of them. There we go. Now, um, the thing is, what we want to do is, as this gets a one or a zero for each of these, we want it to slope to the number it gets. And the way we can do that by adding the following patching. I'm going to select this so I can put right under it. Roll one. Pack, P A C K, F space 50. And then click outside the object. And then select this and put below it an object that's line tilde. Now I'm going to explain these after I connect line tilde up to there. Move these down. There we go. Now, line tilde is what's doing the work here. Line tilde takes an audio signal that comes in, which is a stream of numbers. And whenever it receives a stream of the number stream, if you send it a message that is that number stream, here, this pack means we're sending a message that has two items in it. So it packs together two items into one message, which is how line tilde wants to receive it. It's packing together F, which is just a symbol for float, which in programming means a number. <laughs> and the number it's getting is either a one or zero from this receive. So it receives that one or zero, base 50. The line then receives a 1 or a 0 space 50. Now the 1 means go to that number and same thing with 0. The first, did, the first number in the message means go to the number 1, go to the number 0. So the star tilde, which is our amplifier, will receive a 1 or a 0. But 
line goes there over time, and that time is the second number you said, which is a time in milliseconds. 50 milliseconds is a very short amount of time. Uh, it is, well, 100 milliseconds is one-tenth of a second. So this is half that. So this is one zero point fifth of a second. I'm combining fractions and decimal points here, but uh, it's a tiny fragment of a second. But it's long enough to get rid of the snap. Because it slopes, line creates a line. So it'll slope from a zero to a one or a one down to a zero in time in such a way that you don't hear that sudden jump. So it just smooths it out. Now, even though we're not going to be using this for sound later, whatever we do use it for, in this case, it's going to be amplitude modulation. We want to basically slope to that change of wave shape so that there isn't like a sudden, you know, alteration in the shaping of the amplitude, which you'll see later when we do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to clip these and then just copy and paste because it's the same patching for each. OD, Command D and Mac, click on the blue, make sure you select the right one. It could be either of the objects when they're highlighted blue. Connect that up. Then I'm going to move it down to put it in line with the other one. There we go. Control D again. Oh, I didn't select something. Got to do it again. There we go. Connect it up. Connect it up. There, I'm being anal and lining it up, right. And then I'm going to put this in line with that. And we might as well hear this now. So basically, when whichever one we select receives the one, the others are receiving a zero. But they too are going to be sloping that value of zero so whatever's being turned off and whatever's being turned on are going to basically be sloping to on and off which is a cross fade one will fade in while the other fades out and so we won't hear that snapping sound between them again so i'm going to turn on dsp if you want to lower your volume go ahead and let's hear switching between them. You shouldn't hear that snap in between the switching again. Oh, nothing's happening because I just changed patching here. So all these are zeroed out. So let me select sine wave. No snapping in between. But you heard a snap there when I turned off DSP because it went from sound to no sound suddenly. Um, but that we can't really, you know, worry about so much because um, basically we'll set this up so the synthesizer has DSP flowing when it opens. Not at this stage. Um, we'll add that later in some spot that makes sense. So now what I'm going to do is to finish this off is just take out this because we're not going to use it for sound. I just wanted to use that to demo so you could hear the different uh, wave shapes. But we are going to use this to shape um, amplitude. So later we will be changing this patch a little bit to make it um, work for that purpose. But right now, for this lesson, this patch is good the way it is. And what you want to do is this. We're going to start doing this so that we have good habits. Let's close it. Now I'm going to hit Control S to save this parent patch as it is. If you save with the window open, the next time you open the patch, this thing will be a gray box and the window that is the inside of the sub patch will be open. And we don't really want that. So 
I'm going to do this. Let's zoom out. Save. Control S. Let's close it. I'm going to close this. Um, I'm going to open PD from fresh again. Go to file. And it should be the top file in the list down here. Let's open it up. There we go. Now we need to turn on DSP. Now it's showing the sine wave shape there, but did I really turn on DSP? Yeah. So now let's click this. We got a triangle. We got a No, we're not getting it. You know why? Our toggle isn't on. So that's why I did this. I wanted to test if things were working properly. So we're going to right click on this, go to open, and connect this load bank to a message of a one. Remember, a toggle is either one or zero. So just banging it is not going to do anything. So our load bang needs to bang a message of one. And that needs to go into, sorry, that one needs to go into the toggle box. But the toggle box is there for the user to turn on or off. But it would be nice if when they first open the patch that it's actually running. Another thing to notice I'm going to hit control S here to save that. Now that load bang, remember, is going to bang that one when we start. So I'm going to test again by reopening this. But another thing is you see how the patch cables going from different items are not showing through here. Only your objects will show through. Um, patch cables don't show through. So that's nice. Well, let's close this and test it again. What we want to do, make sure we get the results we want at this point. Good. It opens up. The sine wave is flowing. Now the triangle. Now the square, the pulse. And then the sawtooth. There we go. It's all working, folks. So I want you to do that to test your stuff out, make sure it works. Now I can save it with confidence that this is a working patch. Alrighty, so. Thank you for joining me this week. I hope you learned a lot. Next week we're going to make our actual audio signal oscillator set called a carrier oscillator, because it carries the audio signal. And we're going to make these four basic wave shapes again, but using a different method that would actually make them sound a little bit smoother, I believe. So that we're going to use that as our carrier signal. And it'll also teach you how to make these wave shapes using adding together sine tones. Now, this will be an easier way. We're not going to be uh, um, using individual oscillators and sine tones and adding them together like in week two. Um, but, or episode two, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be using a message in a way that it creates this addition of the sine waves together in one <laughs> fell swoop. So it'll actually be a shorter episode next time. And I hope you join me. If you found this useful at all, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to hear more um, or see more in the future. So thank you for being with me, and I'll see you next time.